these young men are doing the work. They are doing the Lord's work. I personally chanced on them on social media a couple of months ago, and I am absolutely in love with what they're doing in Ghana. I, am, I was When the conversation came up, I was thinking of Kobiche and him. Because I'm like, I see what these young men are doing. Um, I, I mean, and them, I said him. <laughs> how I didn't recognize him on the set was another different conversation. But joining us, Samuel White, a Japan, a filmmaker, road uh, safety advocate as well, and King Fad Abukari, also a road safety advocate. And the, I wish we could ask, how old are you? How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could ask that because at what point did you? This, did you decide that, listen, I'm going to put myself on the line to make sure this conversation is had. I'm going to start with you, um, Kane Fad. Yeah, um, thank you very much, and thanks for having me on the show. Um, I would say I started this um, road safety issue or um, awareness mm -hmm. not quite a long time, but I think it has taken um, some years. A couple of years. Yeah, mm -hmm. because... Um, looking at where I am coming from, from coming from a deprived area, I should say, um, from a community where you can always see plenty of people or numerous people on the streets, and mm. also sometimes we encounter, we get um, in touch with cars, motor, uh, bikes, and a uh, whole stuff. You know, so this is an area that we call um, the street Chinatown because of the numerous people we have on the street. Okay, well, so, what is that? Um, around Mamubi, Kaukudi. Oh, oh in, in Accra? In Accra, yeah. Chinatown, in yes, Accra. Yes. <laughs> so okay. this is what happens there. Um, such places, cars don't even um, get the chance to even move freely mm. because of um, due to the number of people on the street. Mm -hmm. So sometimes cars have to even take their time to have their way to have a safe pass because if you don't take time and you hit someone on the street, it's going to turn out to be a problem, mm -hmm. you know. So um, it came by our people, you know, with quote unquote that they think our people in the Zungo community and community are not um, educated. Mm -hmm. So having me to be um, somebody who is a student mm -hmm. and I chanced on being a road safety advocate, so I think I'll take it upon myself yeah. to educate my people yeah. from my community yeah. before I move out. Absolutely. So I started educating them in my local language, mm -hmm. that's the house that and mm -hmm. those Right. the tribes that are um, there in the community. Yeah. So I think it's just um, something I did basically. So this is born of out of your passion for your people and right. also noticing that, that nobody else could do this now and it's a problem. Yeah. So let me take it upon myself. That's brilliant. Samuel White, I, your, your video, I saw your video, um, it, it, it came up on my timeline and I saw you, I think it was a trotro trying to park at a place that, you know, was not um, safe, and then I think you were addressing them to not park, and for you, you were wearing a vest, but I, exactly. I know that they thought they thought you were police. Yeah. I know they thought you were police, yeah. but it yeah. was necessary for you to do that. When did you start this, and why? Okay, thank you very much for having me on this show as well. It's a pleasure to have you. Sir. Okay, personally, I had an encounter April 1st, 2019, where I witnessed an accident. I rushed the person to the hospital, but unfortunately, she lost her life. And then since then, I asked myself, how many people have died this way? Mm -hmm. What can I do? I'm a filmmaker. How can I have an impact on the society? I started by shooting content relating to road safety. So it's just like our own skits we see on the yeah. television, like the li Dr. Like is them. But mine is towards educating the public about the need to stay safe on the road. Yeah. So that's how it started, it started from 2019. But this, um, this is how I really started it. Um, I would buy morning triangles, as many as I could, maybe 20, 50 pieces, because I was always against the road crash incidents of trucks being on the road. Mm -hmm. So when I'm driving and I notice maybe a truck is broken down somewhere, I'll just take one from the vehicle and I'll keep it there and I'll drive off. And I wasn't even documenting them. I was doing it out of passion. When I do that, I feel, very, I feel like, oh, Charlie, tonight I saved some accidents, yeah. so I feel very good about it. And it's been from April 2019 till 2024, and we are still doing you it. You have evolved from just put helping people privately into documenting instances where people are being very disobedient on the road. Mm -hmm. um, some of the challenges you, you, you faced doing that would be? Okay, we are citizens, okay? We are always calling on the government, on the government, but we also have a role to play. Just like my video you chanced on. Yeah. On that highway, there's an outer lane. 
that loads for those going on the outer lane, maybe Dome, mm -hmm. St. John's, Taifa, and all those places. And then there's a highway one that goes to, let's say, Accra. Mm -hmm. So if you know you are going to Dome, what do you do? You bought the Dome vehicle. Mm -hmm. You don't bought the one going to Accra. And you expect the driver to stop on the highway for you to drop. And then when they drop over there too, it doesn't end there. Instead of them to go and cross the footbridge, they still cross on the highway again. And then when you try to correct them, it becomes a challenge. I've been hitting in a vehicle by a passenger before mm. because I told the driver I'm not going to allow them to stop on the highway. And the guy hit me. He doesn't understand why he wants to drop because they usually drop him. So he doesn't get it. Where are you from? Why do you want to tell me I can't? I'm like, no. This is how we can all collectively help. You can't always be blaming the government, Ministry of Road, Ministry of Highway, Road Safety. You also have a role to play. So the challenges I get it from the citizens, mm. they are very difficult. They are very stubborn. Mm. I've even been attacked with the knife before mm. at Odumasi Junction, just because a motorbiker tried to cross a red light. And I said, stop. They, they came to attack me. Wow. Yeah. Bad. Uh <laughs> Let, let me take your challenges you felt you faced in your area and um, because again we will we, now we know you've gone a bit yeah. beyond your area but in when you started how difficult was it to get the message across to your people mm, honestly it has been very difficult because you know as i made mention before or earlier you know with our settings or our community people don't usually accept things freely like that they intend to ask the purpose of what you are doing what benefits you they will get from it mm -hmm. not they thinking maybe this could save their lives mm -hmm. because imagine numerous people on the street and there is a motorbike and you know our area it's always about motorbikes and cars and the majority is motorbikes you know how they move about some even just play around with the motorbikes all these are problems and i've seen even from from my friends that i lived with people have been injured because of road and uh, bad road behaviors and stuff mm -hmm. you know so the challenges has been like they don't want to accept you from what you because usually it has to be like okay we are together why don't we go out to play football why are you moving away from what we are doing and you moving in to do what it's so not the even acceptance is very difficult because i can smell that in both your conversation yeah. i can literally hear that we as Ghanaians are not easily convinced to do the right it's, thing it's a big it's a big problem with accepting yeah you know because i think for for a fact in, in terms of doing everything or anything, you would have to accept first. Mm. That's even, when you look at the religious aspect of everything we are doing, it is acceptance. Yeah. We've never seen God, we don't know who God is, but we accepted that, okay, there is God. So now we'd have to worship oh, him. Okay. So you accept it first, then Before now you can take a, you can step. Take a step on it. Wonderful. Now, let's move away from your person. We'll come back there <laughs> later. But the issue at hand is road safety and also um, what happens to people who, get involved in accidents but let's let's talk about what are some of the major causes now, since you have been on the road you've seen some really gory accidents i'm sure um what are some of the major causes of accidents right now in ghana okay thank you very much for this question yeah. we are trying to start using road crash instead of accidents because accidents are unexpected events but road crash are as a result of our human behavior because if you are driving and you are texting and you get involved in an accident, you get involved in an incident like that, it's a road crash, you caused it. Because when you were driving, you were texting, what were you expecting? Mm. You are drunk, you are driving, what are you expecting? Mm. You have a child in front with no seat belt. When there's an incident, what are you expecting? So let's go back to your question. Yeah. The causes, me personally being on, even this morning, out of every 10 vehicles you see moving, you find about six people on their phones. Almost everybody in this country is texting and driving. Mm. And then accidents don't happen in um, a minute or two for you to realize yourself or assess the situation. It takes just a second. By the time your head is down from the phone, it's already occurring. Mm. There's nothing you can do about it. And then drunk driving. Party, you know how party life in Accra is. And then people are driving very speed vehicles now. So from 12 a.m., 1 a.m., everybody wants to prove the kind of car they are driving on the roads. If you usually ply the 37 road, uh. you notice them, you find them on the road, 
overspeeding. Overspeeding. That is another cause. Another factor can also be fatigue. You know the nature of our roads. People want to go to work um, around 8 o'clock, but they have to leave the house um, uh, maybe 4 a.m., 3 a.m., okay? You drive through all this traffic to go to work. And then when coming back, you're driving through the same traffic and stress. Not everybody is able to keep their composure when driving. You can get tired, and then when you find sleep stealing you just a little bit, it can also cause a major accident. Yeah. So the factors and the causes, there are many, yeah, but just many. to this mention is, a few, this is, this is what you can just to mention a few. And, and, I, and I believe that these ones are like the highlight of the causes of accidents. I think phone, eh, this phone issue should And get, I see you're wearing a shirt with that. Don't drive phone, texting. Don't drive texting. It's a big thing for you, eh? It's a major topic, like a subject we should, it it's should be a that. national discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be a national discussion. We shouldn't take it lightly as, oh, it belongs to the road safety authority supposed to do it. No. Mm. We should all get involved because if I'm driving with you and I'm on my phone and you are mute, you're also on your phone and I need, something happens, do you think you go scot-free? No. I posted a video yesterday about a Benz um, vehicle that got involved in the accident. The driver didn't lose a life. It's a passenger. So imagine you were in the car and the guy was over speeding and you were not able to say, brother, please take your time and you were just there enjoying the ride you've lost your life he's alive he's at the hospital he's going to come back maybe he's going to have a change of mind now but you're gone but you are gone, you are gone. yeah yeah mm. right um i'd like to come in here and um I've, I've, i mean you and i we will go way back way back but let me use this opportunity and on this platform i mean i've never had the opportunity to tell you because i never saw him 